they are not in a situation where two officers are together, then they should try to get into a position where they can uh, conceal themselves until a cover is able to get there. And we know today, after hearing the testimony, that that did not happen. So it became very clear why they wanted to make Amber Geiger an off-duty police officer. And, and that brings me to my next question to you. Do you believe Amber Geiger was treated differently in this case, in the investigation, because she was a police officer? Absolutely. I think it is very clear that she was treated differently. I don't know of any case in my over 20 years of practicing law that an individual accused of taking the life of someone would be able to walk around an apartment complex talking on the telephone. We now know that instead of uh, rendering aid to both of them, she was sending text messages to uh, Officer Rivera. So there were a number of things that she did uh, throughout the night uh, that she was treated differently. And there's no question that at the moment that the police officers arrived, Amber Geiger should have been treated like any other individual, any other suspect was, would be treated for taking someone's life. And uh, as a result, we know that the stories that, that she has given well, are, are quite different because one of the policies of the Dallas Police Department is whenever there is an officer involved shooting, one of the very first individuals that they call uh, is an attorney that's uh, kept on retainer by the Dallas Police Union. So we know now that some of the stories that we heard from Amber Geiger, perhaps even what she was saying during the 911 card uh, recording was uh, stuff that's all given to her by her attorney. Let me ask you, because there's another part of this case which is the racial aspect of it. Do you believe Amber Geiger was treated differently because she is white? You know, I, we often say this, that we don't always try to make a case uh, about race. But in this case, it's, she was treated differently. Uh, I think both of them was killed because of his race. Uh, we know that in Dallas and throughout the country, there are training issues. Officers shoot first and they ask questions later. And in this case, uh, had Amber Geiger just used some type of de-escalation techniques, had she just backed up and got on her, her phone or her, I mean, her company uh, department issue uh, radio and called and say that she thought that there was a crime taking place, both of them would be alive today. But because of the training that police officers receive, that they shoot first, this is exactly what happened. She saw an African-American male who happened to be in his own apartment. And the first thing that she did was she resorted to using deadly force. And in this case, the deadly force that she used was not reasonable. Another question that's sort of related to what you just what you just said, but just a little bit different. Do you believe that she was treated differently because both of them was black? Yes, we know. Uh, and all the experiences that we have dealt with throughout the uh, country. We know that had both of them walked into that apartment and shot Amber Geiger, that he would have been arrested immediately. So we know that she was treated much differently than had the, the shoes been on the other foot. But So we, we know here in Dallas uh, there's a policy where police officers do not have to give a statement until 72 hours after the incident happened. We know that regular individuals who take someone's life, they are not afforded that, that, that type of opportunity. So clearly there was a lot that was done with this investigation that could have been costly. But fortunately, I think the Dallas District Attorney's Office has been doing a tremendous job. There's a lot that they have been able to, to uncover, one being the text messages. Luckily, they were able to get some of the text messages before they were all deleted.